Jane Yamada. Uh, Japanese way is called Yuji Yamada. Uh, I have two birthdays. So this is rather confusing to everyone. And uh, I have nothing against the uh, American people except that uh, I was not given citizenship when I was born in the States. Born in pre-Great Depression Los Angeles, Yuji Jean Yamada arrived just after the Immigration Act, or Johnson-Reed Act, of 1924 had been signed into law by President Calvin Coolidge. Due to this and other unknown complications, Jean was officially born without a country. And uh, I had to be born <laughs> in 1933 in Japan. <laughs> and that's the reason why I have two birthdays. Uh, my passport says that I was born in 1933. And uh, birth certificate they shoot in uh, Los Angeles City Hall. Uh, it's somewhere here. <laughs> it's, uh, it says I was born in 1933, May 20, 20 what? 28th. Jean's parents, his father a can manufacturing engineer and his mother a daughter of the Buddhist temple, came to the United States during the late 1920s only to go back to Japan in 1933 and onward to Taiwan in 1935. His family spent 11 years in Taiwan wherein they witnessed and survived a number of life-threatening experiences, including a torpedo attack during a family trip to Hong Kong and World War II. Uh, that's how strong fortune we have. <laughs> They started from 1943 or so, the situation was getting worse. Uh, my classmate, Taiwanese classmate, was uh, asking me, well, Jin, you are from, originally from Tainan, that is about, uh, let's see, 60 kilometers north of Kaohsiung. We didn't get the permission from our parents, so it's in a sort of uh, uh, incognito <laughs> type of uh, escapade, so to speak. And then I think twenty, well, less than twenty minutes after the, the start of uh, the train, then the uh, the Japanese uh, military police came and said it's uh, the get out of the train because uh, fighters, American fighters are coming in and so it's, uh, it's not safe to say it. We left the, the train and one was saying you go, go inside the gutter of the, of the what do you call the railway and uh, so he pushed me in the gutter. Then uh, I was I said, the one you should also join me. I pulled his arm to come down to the, the same gutter. Then he got shot. The, uh, his warm blood shed was coming down from my left hand because I was trying to pull him in. And I didn't know what to do now because it's a sad thing. After World War II, Jean and his family returned to Japan not even eligible for rationed foods due to their absence from the country during the war and therefore absence from any distribution lists. See, actually, when I, I went to a, a university in Tokyo, Tokyo University of Foreign Studies, uh, measuring in international relations those days called it's now called developing economics <laughs> and uh, I never thought of uh, studying economics and in fact I have not studied at all because uh, I don't like it during his time at Tufts, Jean and his friends collaborated with a nearby all-girls arts college and organized a school dance. Funny thing though, Jean couldn't dance and neither could the girl that he noticed that night. So I was looking at her, <laughs> I approached her saying that you don't dance. No, I can't. So, out of mutual boredom and in classic college fashion, Jean and his new friend decided for something more exciting. Somehow, we 
ended up, I think, a few places, and uh, my memories were all gone. True to this statement, Jean couldn't remember a single detail about her, and it wouldn't be until one fateful day in Ginza, some two years later, that he would run into her again. Back at school, despite being rather unmoved by the prospects of international relations and economics, during his final year, Jean was convinced by friends to take a recruitment exam offered by Tufts Japan Productivity Center, or JPC. So about 2,000 candidates have applied. I mean, all over from Japan, not only in Tokyo. And uh, about, about 10, I think about a dozen of them got selected. Because he had originally been roped in by friends, Jean didn't want the job, but when confronted by the JPC president, the following conversation ensued. But stay with this organization. So I said, sir, I do not know exactly what the heck productivity means in the first place. I said, no, it's not so difficult. I said, doing things better, that's all. Nothing more than that. I said, well, anyway, join us. And this, his first job, was what landed him in Ginza a few years later and, unexpectedly, in front of a familiar face. After spotting each other at opposite ends of the Yonchome crosswalk, Jean and Kimio exchanged contact information and remained in touch even through Jean's first business trip abroad. After having returned from the States and six months after last exchanging numbers, Jean met up again with Kimio in Ginza. And uh, uh, went to I think a restaurant on the uh, Matsuya department store. So, so uh, I was fumbling my uh, pocket and I had the uh, one piece of uh, chewing gum, a regular chewing gum. I wanted to find the, another one, but there was only one piece. And so I broke it into half. Yes, you want to have one? Yeah. <laughs> he says, okay. So I said, uh, you want to marry me? She said, huh? <laughs> Only chewing gum? <laughs> so I have nothing more to offer. <laughs> so that's how we ended up. <laughs> Jean went on to have an incredibly successful career as an international civil servant, spending nearly 50 years with a global organization known as the Asian Productivity Organization and speaking as a guest lecturer after retirement. He currently resides in a 100-year-old home tucked away in Yotsuya Sanchome.